Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you're new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividends, stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. Things are just getting crazy in this space. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up watch it straight through it would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people because the youtube algorithm is absolute magic when you find ladies and gentlemen do that all right let's get straight into it little disclaimer i am not a financial advisor please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff i do not want to see anyone get financially hurt that's why my number one golden rule is i only invest what i can afford to lose and yes we don't like to lose you can lose money like that especially in the crypto market all right in the blink of an eye so please be careful out there do your own research this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only all right ladies and gentlemen formal are out of the way i am noticing a lot of like you know um you know people on twitter at the moment are just being so negative out there in the market there's so many scams going around like literally heaps of scams especially in the arbitrage um niche which is something i'm wanting to develop this you know my own uh apple program for so whatever you see on uh, youtube or twitter or tiktok or whatever you're doing please be careful with it um, I have seen so many scams recently and uh, it's pretty bad. So that's really annoying. And uh, I just want everyone to be very cautious of this stuff as well. Obviously, now if you go to the community tab here on my channel, these are my top gainers. Luna was absolutely pumping last night. Crazy stuff. Even now, it's like Monday afternoon or you know Sunday night in the United States and around the rest of the world. Uh, Luna was up like 77%. It went up to about 100. And then it just dropped back down. It was 44%, which was just crazy. Um, and 83% of you have actually voted for that, which is unbelievable. RSR as well, reserve rights. Kin token as well. That is a low cap gem right there. TLM, Alien Worlds. You know, gaming coin, obviously, and FTM as well. So they're the gainers that are in my portfolio. Let's have a look at CoinSpot to see what the market is doing today. There's not a lot happening out there. There are some news news articles that we'll go through, and I'll show you that in a second. CoinSpot, this is where I buy my cryptos in Australia. Please feel free to use the referral link below. You can get $10 in Bitcoin. Please do your own research, of course. All these prices are in Australian dollars, just to clarify, Australian dollars. And I just want to point out something very interesting as well. I read an article from the founder of Dogecoin who actually said that 95% of cryptocurrencies are going to disappear. And I tend to agree with him. Facts right now. So that is why I'm heavily focused on my favorite projects, the ones with real utility that will change the game, the financial game forever. All right, well, I'm going to read through my favorites. Let's go through it. Bitcoin sitting at $43,000 today. Not too bullish on that, guys. Nothing's happening with that. It's been flat. Obviously, we've had a lot of ETFs being launched in Australia. Hasn't really affected the price of Bitcoin much. You've got Ethereum at $2,970. you have got XRP at $0.60 cents right now, which is really nice to see some green on the screen because it's always been red for the last couple of days. You've got Cardano at $0.78. Cents. That's still bullish with Cardano. Solana's at $76. Dogecoin at $0.12 cents right now. Polkadot's at $14. AVAX at $46. You've got Polygonmatic at $0.98. Cents. You've got LTC as well is at $104. Crow's at $0.28. Cents. New Protocol's at $9, up from 8 from yesterday, which is nice. Uh, sorry, on uh, Saturday. You've got Link at $10 as well, which is a good buying opportunity. Stellar's at $0.19, cents, one of my favorites for utility. I mean, it is part of the ISO 222 migration. It is a compliant project. You've got Algorand, another ISO 222 compliant project that's $0.64. Cents. Keeps going down here, guys. You've got Hedera, $0.15 cents right now. The governance board for Hedera is absolutely insane. Too many big corporations involved with Hedera, and I just think it's too big to fail. So that's one of my bullish ones right there. VeChain's at $0.04 cents as well. I'm big on logistics and supply chain. And moving to the blockchain, VeChain's going to be number one for that. At $0.04, cents, that's a bargain. Keeps going down here, guys. Sandbox at $2. Zcash, I am considering adding that as well. Considering considering adding that. So I'm losing my words, words here, guys. Anyway, Axe Infinity's at $33 right now, up 8%, which is nice. Luna is at 14%. 
it was absolutely pumping yesterday, which is crazy to see that. But again, my investment of just a little over 102, about $102, I think it was, um, it's doing quite well. So I'm not complaining about that. We'll get into some updates about Do Kwon in a moment. Air Phantom is at 70 cents. You've got the graph at 24 cents. IOTA, another banking coin at 51 cents. Look at UST right now at 9 cents. How bad is that? That's terrible to see that, guys. Quant is at $102 right now. You've got Zill at 8 cents. And my other favorite here is XDC at 6 cents, which has literally been the most undervalued crypto gem in my portfolio, part of ISO 222 migration, trade finance. It is a monster, monster, monster project right there, guys. And definitely not talked about very much in the crypto community. Let's go to the news crypto bubbles. Let's have a look and see what's going on in the market. Luna up 17%. Let me know in the comments below if you think Luna can recover the slightest. Um, I'm just curious to see if people actually think Luna will recover. We'll see what happens. Again, I've taken a risk. I knew that when I was investing that hundred and hundred odd dollars, a hundred and two odd dollars, that it would, you know, basically it's gone for me. If it goes up, it's incredible. But I mean, pumping last night, seventy-seven percent. Can't complain about that. You've got e, uh, sorry, e cash as well. I've seen this so many times pop up. It still had a hundred and three percent return on the year, which is crazy. Seventeen percent on the day. I mean, where? on earth can you get a return of 103% on your money in a year? Just does not exist. This is why I love cryptocurrencies, but they are so risky. And there's so many scams and rug pulls as well. And uh, most of these coins that you see here will disappear. That's facts right now, because when crypto regulation ends up coming through, which I mean, the UST collapse with Terra Luna has literally sparked so much um, involvement with government regulators, most of these coins will disappear. Because again, they're all probably just benefiting the founders, blah, blah, blah. I think that's going to happen as well. But so that is the reason why I'm so focused on my bullish, you know, my favorite projects, the ones with real utility that do not uh, rely on retail investors coming into this space and actually buying it. It's going to be used by inst institutions. Anyway, what else we got here, guys? Neo, I'm still holding that. I believe it's like the... Um, like an Ethereum version, basically, a layer one. Neo is a great project. Um, obviously, you've got FTM as well, up 13% on the day, 37% on the year, which, I mean, it's incredible to see that, guys. UST, still at $0.08 cents right now. That's terrible, down, oh, you know, 23% today. Now, moving on, you've got some updates in relation to the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit, one of my favorite projects. I'm so bullish on it, just filling my bags every single week, dollar cost averaging it. I bought it the other day, and I'm just continuing to add slowly, slowly, slowly to my portfolio. And you've got the SEC vs. Ripple, Amici, uh, Amici takes aim at duties responsible XRP holders assertion. This is basically Johnny Deaton now wanting to bring uh, 67,000 XRP holders into this case. He's made an application to the court. So he's filed a motion uh, letter asking the judge in the SSFS Ripple lawsuit uh, to let him write a brief on behalf of 67,300 XRP holders in the United States who have been hurt by the lawsuit. The move comes following a recent testimony from an expert uh, SEC witness who gave a report on what information reasonable XRP holders were relying on when they bought the token. Deaton says he bets that the witness gave testimony without interviewing a single XRP holder. I agree with him. I don't think any of them have interviewed an XRP holder. And I mean, there's been a lot of people that have been affected by this. So we'll see what what happens here, guys. And the Amici request uh, permission to file a brief regarding the SEC expert who claims to know motivation of XRP holders when purchasing XRP. Amici also seeks access to expert report and deposition testimony. This is getting pretty legal right here, guys. So Movens in their individual capacities shall be permitted to act as Amici, Amici Curiae Legal terminology right now. In this action as such, movements shall be allowed to assist in the court by briefing legal issues relevant to the case as approved advance by the court. The order stated right now. Jeremy Hogan obviously tweeted this as well. Johnny Deaton marching into court. The SEC wants an expert witness to give testimony about what XRP holders were thinking when they bought the XRP. Duh. Anyway... Keep moving on. Deaton represents 67,000 actual XRP holders and wants to present what they were actually thinking. So, of course, the SEC opposes it. They are just, you know, favoring, favoring, favoring uh, themselves right now. And it's really irritating and annoying. Obviously, I'm still keeping, you know, an update on this case. And I'm still bullish on XRP because I believe it is the number one cryptocurrency out there at the moment with literally actual utility that will be used by financial institutions and potentially partnering up with SWIFT 
which I saw some rumors going around as well that that yacht party that uh, obviously Ripple hosted. And I saw someone on TikTok, TikTok actually go to that event and uh, it was pretty crazy. So could that have been a celebration for the partnership with Swift? I don't know. Be very interesting right there to speak to Brad Garlinghouse about that. Doge founder says 95% of cryptos are scams. Elon Musk reacts. So the Doge co-founder, Billy Marcus, sparked great debate after claiming that 95% of cryptocurrencies projects are fraudulent as whinging, uh, whinging even caught the attention of Elon Musk right now. So even though he's no longer directly involved with the meme coin that he helped create, Marcus is also known for controversial and often sarcastic comments on Twitter. So this is his tweet right here. The reason why people think crypto is 95% scams and garbage and most of crypto people are a-holes right there is because crypto is 95% scams and garbage and most crypto people are blah 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 i'm not going to get it so i'll get banned on youtube let's change that it starts with you what you support and how you behave and uh, honestly guys i've seen so many scams recently coming out especially in the crypto trading space i have been a victim of one of those i've lost thirty thousand dollars um, I mean, there's so many of them going around right now. So please be careful. Check everything. Do your research. And me personally, if I was to ever get involved with something like that again, I'll only invest what I can afford to lose. And I strongly suggest that you do the same, but not financial advice. Do your own research with this stuff. A lot of these coins out there are, you know, scams and just a way for people to make a substantial amount of money, aka the board uh, ape yacht coin, whatever you call them, board ape coin, ape coin. Um, I think it really is only a way for people to make money off other retail investors trying to get into this Board Ape Yacht Club. And it, all that money goes back to the holders of the NFTs anyway. So there you go, guys. Crazy stuff. Moving on. Goldman SEO, CEO, sorry, is a real bull on the disruption of di um, digital disruption of the financial infrastructure right now. He's the CEO of Goldman Sachs. There is an interview on my Twitter page. We'll get into that in a second as well. Have a listen to his interview. Ethereum name service uh, is reaching critical mass. Dot ENS right there. That's pretty full on or dot ETH. Um, there's been a record number of people actually getting a hold of these. So let me know in the comments below if you've actually registered a domain name on Ethereum name service. That'd be pretty full on as well. Um, I'd be curious to see if anyone in my uh, community is actually holding a dot ETH a domain um, or actually holding the ENS token. It'd be fascinating to see that as well. Now, this is in relation to Luna, the humbling right now. This is an interesting article. So Terra Collapse brought the light a little, how little we knew about Do Kwon beyond his LinkedIn page and Twitter profiles. He graduated from Stanford in 2015 after studying computer science and briefly worked at Microsoft and Apple before forming Terra Luna. Two days after UST plummets began, Coindesk allegedly doxed Quan as the Rick, a reference to half the ca cartoon duo of Rick and Morty behind another failed algorithmic stablecoin project called Basis Cash at BAC, which slipped its dollar peg for good early last year. For, sorry, for a good early last year. BAC is now worth a fraction of a penny. Still, Quan appears steadfast after two days of Twitter silence last week, he finally took to the heat for UST's historic failure. What's more, he happens to even have risen. He appears to have risen to the task of rebuilding Terra. On Monday, he proposed for a fork of Luna's blockchain to rename the current chain Terra Classic with a new chain uh, wiped off USD, UST right there. So Quan's proposal was met with near unanimous disapproval in a preliminary vote on Terra's community forum. Many who prefer Quan listened to Chang Pen Zhao's suggestion to buy and burn most of Luna's hyperinflated uh, circulation supply of 6.5 trillion tokens. Quan knows what the community wants but he's arguing against it. This time, he's engaging in critical and constructive conversations with his critics instead of just dismissing them outright, which, again, he's putting so many Twitter updates as well. Again, I think that Luna could potentially recover. I mean, there's so much hate out there about it. I think it could recover, if not you know, slightly to where it was before. It'd be incredible. So we'll see what happens, guys. I mean, he's openly and active with the community on Twitter, and he's, he's responding, which is good to see that. So Terra gains 100% amid insane volatility as analysts remain split on gigantic lunar recovery. It pumped 77% last night, went up to 100, now it's dropped back down to 14. Again, this is usually the case with all cryptocurrencies on a Monday, um, obviously afternoon. I'm still bullish on it as well. Now, this is our new prime minister here in Australia, by the way. This is Anthony Albanese. Uh, this is the new prime minister in Australia. There's been some articles right here on uh, Bloomberg. 
Caroline Bowler, Chief Executive Officer of BTC Markets, which is an exchange here in Australia, says the new government uh, is expected to continue work that is already started around cryptocurrency regulation. For the crypto market, the primary concern would be to put another together the appropriate regulatory time frame for the marketplace, but also leave the room for innovation. There is a real opportunity for government to assist with innovation and support it relating to the significant role that financial services play in the Australian economy, but also position itself globally. This is in relation to cryptos and regulation. So we'll see what happens right there, guys. Now, I'm not going to move into this other article here. This is basically saying, should you invest in real estate, uh, obviously cryptos or stocks? Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below what you like. I'd like to be uh, obviously hear from the community about that one. This is Cryptometer.io. Let's refresh this to see where the money has been flowing in the last day. Ethereum and AVAX. Let me know if you hold any of those. Obviously, Ethereum, I don't hold much, just for gas fees pretty much. The last day, BTC, GMT, Steppen as well. That's nice to see that again. OG, ANC, Solana, Link, Waves, KCS, and Doge. If you go to the last hour, let's have a quick look at this. Ethereum, GMT, AVAX, FTM, Doge, Dot, XRP. Nice to see that there, guys, for once. Luna and Rose. Now, if you go to Twitter right now, I'm going to play you this interview right here from Do Quan. Uh, now, again, have a listen to this. He's you know basically saying that 95% of cryptocurrencies will disappear. Have a listen. Like... I wonder how many of uh, these companies you think are entering the space just because it's hot and there's a lot of funding versus the ones that will s still be here, you know, like two to five years later. 95% oh, <laughs> are going to die. Yeah. 95% are going to die. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's also entertainment for watching companies die too. There's entertainment. Oh man, that's, that's, that's so <laughs> evil. At least you get to learn. Okay. I don't like that comment. There's entertainment in that because people will lose money. This is why I always say only invest what you can afford to lose because you never know what you're investing can disappear. So again, anyway, moving on, you've got the CEO of um, uh, Goldman Sachs right here. Have a listen to this interview in relation to his well, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies. Can you weigh in on the world of crypto? Uh, because we've had that conversation a lot over, over the years. And I know you've been somewhat skeptical, I think, of, of, of maybe crypto as a currency, but you've been, you've been bullish uh, uh, in terms of on the blockchain. Clearly, the valuations of a lot of the exchanges, even the folks that are trying to do this on an institutional basis, there's been a lot of conversation about sort of where Goldman fits into the crypto landscape in the future. Do you think that this changes the dynamic in terms of the price coming down of how even a Goldman Sachs or some of your competitors may think about crypto? I continue to be a real bull on the digital disruption of the financial inf infrastructure that underpins everything that we and others that interact in the financial system you know, do on a day-to-day -day basis. The way money moves around the world, the way we can keep track of things, the way we can create automation and efficiency. Big, big believe, believer that blockchain and other technologies, some that exist, some that haven't been developed yet, right. give us great latitude to really evolve that infrastructure, create less friction for end users, more efficiency, cheaper products and services. And so I'm a big believer in that. We've been investing a lot in that. With respect to cryptocurrencies, as you appropriately right. point out, the regulatory construct does not let us do a lot. Um, we talk to clients. We try to respond to inquiries from clients. We're trying to find interesting ways to use the blockchain and use technology in the world that we operate in. So, you know, we've been involved in the construct of doing some repo on the blockchain. We've been involved in making loans that are secured, um, structurally secured by somebody who would custody uh, some sort of cryptocurrency. But at the end of the day, I don't have a strong view. You know, Bitcoin up, right. down, you know, sideways. But, but I think here. a lot of people, I'm, I'm people, more focused I'm being the, on the technology infrastructure than I am on cryptocurrency. But AKA, in my opinion, Ripple and XRP because it is going to be used for ODL on demand liquidity. I think you're saying this is an ENS service right here. You've got obviously global cryptocurrency market has just reclaimed 1.35 trillion. And this is Raul Powell. And I just want to take note of this tweet as well, because it's actually true. There is so sad to see Twitter dissolve into an angry people, value and com or commodity investors, BTC maxis and other non-pragmatists right now, all screaming at anyone with different views. This is just investments, not a philosophical justice war. We all have different views and it's okay. Be nice. Facts right there. Keep moving on right here. Just to clarify, this is Do Kwon. To clarify, as noted multiple times, I don't think sending tokens to this address to burn tokens is a good idea. Nothing happens except that you lose your tokens. 
what uh, want there to be no confusion whatsoever. He's actively communi communicating with his uh, audience right now and community, which I do like. That is nice to see a CEO do that. We'll see what happens with Luna. I'm still, you know, an investor in it. I think it will recover. Just give it time for this all to settle because the entire market is in chaos right now. And I think it just needs time to settle. You've got here, boom, BIS, Conua, I can't even pronounce that name, but the On Innovation and Digital Asset Currencies on January 22nd, 2020, Davos. It's about having technology that cuts, cuts cross-border payments or cross-borders that help cut the cost and improve the speed of cross-border payments right now. Have a quick listen to this, guys. So I would say, so, but it's not, uh, that discussion is, uh, is live. Where do you see the biggest advantage to stable coins? Well, it's about uh, it's about having a technology that uh, that cuts across borders and that can help cut the the cost and uh, and uh, and improve the speed of cross border mm -hmm. payments, which everyone agrees now uh, are too slow and too, and too costly. So I would say the, the top priority for the global community is not about CBDC. CC will come in so central bank digital currency. It will come in due course in different ways, and we're, right. we're working on it. But the top urgent priority is to improve uh, cross border payments in particular for uh, low-income and developing economies because that's a matter of financial inclusion. Ripple XRP, that is facts right there. The Bitcoin chart never failed, and that is facts. That is on blockchaincenter.net, actually. I do mention this sometimes in my videos as well. Basically right here, it's got an incredible thing here where you can see accumulation buy right now, and that's basically where it's at at the moment in that light sort of bluish green color right there. And again, it is slowly going upwards with Bitcoin. So again, accumulation is key right here. Some other things as well. Himan, is that you? Have a listen to this. This is Bill Himan right now. A little bit more about how we're looking at some of the more um, decentralized and seasoned uh, digital assets like Bitcoin and uh, Ether on the Ethereum network. And we, we made it very clear that at this point, we don't see a reason to regulate those as securities or transactions in those instruments as securities at this point. I'm, I know we're going to get into more detail on this, but um, that was another uh, part of our exercise in terms of making it clear to the market. He doesn't want to regulate those because he's being paid significant amounts of money. That's just facts right there. Um, I keep moving on here, guys. Internet may be just a passing fad as millions give up on it. That's facts right there because everyone's the same with cryptocurrencies right now. So please don't be put off by it because it's just the beginning. Only 5% of the world's population is using cryptos. Now, I'm just going to have a quick look at the total market cap. Now, this is in Australian dollars and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to change this to US dollars so I can cater for everybody right now. You've got a market cap of $1.3 which is nice to see that back up above $1.2. $65 billion in volume. That is quite low. 44% BTC, 19% Ethereum, 19,500 cryptocurrencies. 95% of them will disappear. That's facts right there. Now, again, if I go to my watch list right now, this is my actual portfolio, exactly everything that I'm holding. Bitcoin, XRP, Cardano. You can see it on the screen right there. I'm just going to keep scrolling up so you can see that. My favorites are obviously the banking coins right now. I am holding a very diversified portfolio, but these are the ones that I'm focusing right now with real utility that I believe, from my own personal opinion, opinion, they will not fail. XRP is at $0.42 cents USD. Stellar's at $0.13. Cents. Algrand's at $0.44. Cents. Hedera is at $0.10 cents USD. IOTA's at $0.35 cents USD. Quant is at $0.70. US dollars. XTC is at $0.04. Cents. They're the bad boys that I'm investing in right now. And yes, I did obviously purchase $2 more of Luna which got me some ridiculous amount of tokens and coins. So we'll see what happens there as well. Let me know in the comments below if you think 95% of cryptocurrencies will disappear. Let me know in the comments, all right? Stay safe. We'll speak to you soon, guys. Bye.